Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for tuning in. My name is Royce and today we're going to look at how you can get a desktop-ish like setup with the iPad using the new iPad OS that's coming out this fall. And as you can see here, I have my iPad hooked up to my LG USB-C display, uh, the 24 inch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up my Bluetooth keyboard and USB mouse. I was gonna hook up my Bluetooth Magic Mouse, the older one, not the newer one that's all nice and sleek and black. I don't have that one. But I was gonna hook up the older one, but when I tried, you know how you have to enter a code. I messed up, entered the wrong code, and for whatever reason, it's now disappeared from the Bluetooth settings forever, and I haven't been able to pull it back up. So, unfortunately, I have I can't show you a Bluetooth mouse because that's the only one I have. So, I got I had to pull up my old Microsoft, old trusted Microsoft USB mouse. But, so yeah, so with these, I'm gonna show you how you can get a nice desktop-like setup with your iPad hooked up to a monitor. And before we begin, I wanna give a huge shout out to my man Travis who gave me the idea to try this setup. So thank you, man. Thank you, Travis. I appreciate it because we about to get into some stuff because of you, my man. So yeah, so first let's hook up the mouse. So I'm sure by now you've seen how mouse support works, but I'll show kind of quickly how that works in this video as well. All right, so let me pull up my iPad here, go to settings, um, and then you can see, I'll back away, you go down to accessibility and then to touch, assistive touch, we'll turn assistive touch on, and it should already be good to go. It should, but uh, <laughs> it's not plugged in. That'll help. All right, so let me set this down. All right, so we're plugged in, and you can already see that I got the mouse pointer and I changed the color to blue. So yeah, if you didn't know that, because um, I didn't know that until I set it up, you can actually change the cursor color. So you can change the large cursor or bigger. That's just ridiculous. But that could help somebody who needs it. And then you can change the colors here. So I went with blue, you change to red, green, yellow, orange, gray, white. But I go with blue, because that's my favorite color. Now we'll uh, go to Bluetooth. And let's see, I'm seeing some reflection. Let me see if I turn display brightness, light. All right, so yeah, we'll keep it at light mode just so we can minimize some of that reflection coming through the screen. Let's turn our keyboard on. Cool, so we should be connected, let's see. Yep, so the keyboard is connected and there you go. So keyboard, mouse, we can see here, got this controlled here, hit Safari, typing in apple.com, right on the screen. So obviously, of course, the big issue here, as you can see the, uh, the black bars on the sides because it is using the iPad's resolution and it does not adjust to um, the screen that you're using like your laptop. So that's kind of one of the downfalls. Although that would be cool if we could see this change because in settings, if you go to um, display and brightness, you click that and you go to the, see so you see here connected displays, it lists the display that's connected, LG Ultrafine, if you click that, you know, you just kind of get the display settings, allow display mode changes. The brightness so that would be cool at some point in the future I don't know if this would come in I in this version of iPad OS or if it's in the in a future version that you can adjust the resolution based off of the screen that you have this plugged up to because I definitely can see that um, being a situation possibly maybe in a newer iPad you know what I'm saying where you can do that here we go and so now I'm using the mouse got the keyboard uh, going here so it really does give a more desktop like feel to it or having your laptop hooked up to a screen, this is very similar as well. So, and because of the new um, full desktop support, browser support in uh, Safari in iPadOS, you can go to YouTube and you get the full on desktop support there, which is great. You know, it's a slightly a bit wonkier than you, you know, than it is on a laptop or desktop using, you know, a mouse in a more traditional setup, but it does work and it feels very reminiscent of that. If I go home, I go to notes um, and then let's just put up, hold down, there we go, grab it. And of course, one of the newer features with iPad OS is you can have two instances of the same app. So we have that here. So you have this and then if I don't like that, you can kind of double click on the mouse here and then drag and the, you know, accuracy is pretty good. Um, my desk is a little sketchy, so it's not as smooth. I'm not getting smooth enough motions here. So you can drag and select just like this where you can, you know, double click, select a word, or triple click to select the whole thing. Or like quad, quadruple click, <laughs> I guess however long it took to do that. And then of course, you know, 
cut, okay? So you don't have to do the whole gestures of the threes and the fours and the fingers and stuff. You can do that all here. I'm sure you can tell now kind of the experience that you can get. I would show how cool it is to use LumaFusion in this setup, but um, I guess I opened it one too many times or it got onto me and realized that I was on a beta. So it was, oh wait, it opened. Wow, okay, this is great. Literally, this did not open for me two minutes ago. So this is this is awesome. So here you can see it ha has, you know, now you kind of have like a Final Cut uh, like setup or Premiere, whatever your NLE is, you have that feel to it a little bit more. So, and then, you know, you can hit use the space bar to, to play. Do these two, just do multiple, see how that works. Like hit B to cut, Z to undo. Now there is, I wonder, it's probably not working in this beta. There's a way to actually, there is a way for LumiFusion to read that you have an external monitor and you can actually display whatever you want on this and then have the other parts displayed on the iPad, but it doesn't look like it's registering right now. And obviously I'm assuming that's because of the beta. So, you know, you can see here how you can easily get a more desktop-like feel with your iPad to edit videos. Let's open up Lightroom. So we got all these photos here, so you can open this. This is me on set doing sound. Um, I don't even use my room, but you know, you can select things and edit things and do things if you want to do it with a mouse and a keyboard instead of uh, your fingers. Yep, pull <laughs> the we'll exit out of that because I don't even know what I'm doing. There's still a lot of trade-offs that you have to deal with, but this is the closest that we've experienced having an iPad that has the power and ability, finally that solid in-between of a desktop and um, your mobile device. Now what I was really curious about is if I could use the USB-C ports on the back to plug in my hard drives. Cause like I said before, all this stuff is cool, but really what got me most interested was being able to plug in my hard drives. If you haven't seen my last video where I really kind of go into more detail as far as plugging in your hard drives, how that all works with the new iPad OS, definitely check that out by hitting up there. Cause what I think would be really cool is to use those ports to hook up multiple drives. So let's see if that works. All right, first we'll just try plugging up a SD card with a USB-C card reader. Awesome, so we see right away that the ports work on the back of the display, hooked up into the iPad. You know, it it seems like, duh, that should work, but when you think of it as it could, it's the iPad though that's doing it, that's, that's really cool. Okay, okay, let's try one more. Let's see if we can do two. So I'm using my uh, G drive from G Technology. Uh, it's a one terabyte drive, and let's do this. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Let me see. Yep, so we got our content. So we got our contents here. We see both of them are live. Wow, okay. So with the display, I can hook up my SD card and my G drive. But now I'm curious, can we hook up one more? Because technically there's four ports on the back. One's being used to plug up my iPad. Another one's for the mouse. I'm gonna unplug the mouse for now and let's see if we can plug up one more. Let's do it. All right, yo, let's go. Let's go. Oh yes, <laughs> my mouse isn't blinking. <laughs> Let me see, sorry, my mouse is gonna slightly be in the frame right here. Let's see, all right, so we can see all the contents from all the drives that we have here. That is super awesome. So SD card reader plugged into one and I got my two G drives here connected, wow. This is, this is great. I'm gonna take out the SD card reader now. I'm gonna try one more drive and see if we can have three solid hard drives hooked up to this thing now. Moment of truth, moment of truth. Bruh, bruh, what? All the contents, all the contents are there. Oh, oh, we're, oh, oh, we running. We running, y'all. We making things happen. We making things happen. This is, this is, Oh, uh, yes, we live in our best lives right now. That's what this is. I have three USB-C drives hooked up to my LG USB-C display that's hooked into my iPad that's displaying things on the iPad. And it's and I have the keyboard, I have the mouse, but I had to, un I had to disconnect the mouse to get the drives. And now I have the drives and... <sighs> now let's see, let's see if we can drag and drop from drive to drive. Let's test that. All right, so I'm just gonna copy over a simple WAV file. I'm just gonna do one at first just to see if we can make this happen. So uh, actually, let's do this. Let's bring a second instance up here, if it'll let me. Ooh, you know what? No, it doesn't look like it's gonna let me do 
a hard drive second instance. Ah, okay. That's good to know. Because that would have been really dope. If I could have had... Unless... Let me see. You know what I have to do? So let's do... I'll do my sound effects folder. There we go. So on the right is my first drive. And on the left is my second drive. And I'm just going to drag and drop this... No. Just drag and drop this WAV file. Okay. I just dragged and dropped my WAV file from one drive to the next. That... Okay. Let's, let's just... Let's just... Uh, let me see, I'm gonna delete it. Let's just, let's try, let's try two. Two files, drag and drop. Simple as that. Simple as that, two instances of the files that run side by side, both looking at two of my drives that are plugged in to the display. And you know, it's, it's, a, it's a WAV file. It's not that crazy, I understand that. And let's try the third drive. So I'm gonna drag my short film, The Girl With No Brain. If you haven't seen it, go and watch it. Link, sci-fi, psychological dramas, it's nice. Check it out if you like it. Let's drag that drop, drag, drag, and dra drag and drop. <laughs> what am I even saying? I don't know, I'm delirious right now. <gasps> All right, let's see. So it is interesting when I drag over to the drive, it's almost like it, it brings like a shaded uh, version of that file while it's being copied over. <sighs> Just waiting for it to copy, waiting for it to copy. <sighs> It's only what? 1.29 gigs? Come on, bruh. What is this? I thought this was 3.0. USB 3.0 with this. What is this? This is like USB 0.0. So uh, while we're waiting for this, clearly uh, the uh, copy speeds are a little bit different for the video files, which is why I wanted to test it, because video files are usually the largest types of files. And the uh, sound files, the WAV files, transit over like that. But uh, it's not the case. Not the case with video. It's taking forever. Uh, uh. Finally, the file copied over. So you came here from my drive, Rocket Drive 2, over to this one here. Finally finished. I don't know why I'm out of breath. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, even though the file was only 1.29 gigs, that took a good, I would say, it seemed like 15, maybe 20 minutes, which should not be the case. That type of file, if this was USB 3.0, that should have taken like, a minute or so to copy over so I'm not sure exactly what's going on I have to double check I'm pretty sure the this version of the iPad should have USB 3.0 transfer speeds so I don't know if it's the beta I don't know if it's an issue just between transferring from drive to drive because that hasn't really been figured out yet or if it's just a situation with the display itself we're working with a lot of unknowns right now so I can't say for sure what the root of that problem is but all I know is that needs to get figured out quick because I ain't waiting for a 1.29 gig file to take 20 minutes. And what we can actually take away from this is this is clearly just the beginning. I don't know what they have planned for the new iPad um, coming September, but clearly I feel like they're just laying down the foundation for whatever they got in the works um, is gonna utilize this and take it to a whole nother level. So for example, what I would love to see now that displaying all this content on an external display from an iPad actually makes sense and is worthwhile, um, seeing where we can actually output to a different resolution to the resolution of the display we're actually connecting to so it takes up the whole screen and not just have, you know, the iPad resolution. And also to go beyond just mirroring the iPad but having its own separate uh, instance, which would be really dope. So it takes multitasking to a whole new level. You can put one instance of an app on the display, another instance of the app on the iPad. Some apps like LumaFusion are already taking advantage of that. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to show you, but hopefully that's something I can show in the future so you guys can really get an idea of what's to come. But yeah, that's what I'd really love to see. And I just, if the more we're figuring out, the more we're discovering, the more I'm excited. Whatever hardware they got coming later, it's just gonna take it to a whole nother level. And I'm, I'm, I'm hyped. I am hyped. And yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully you got a chance to really see what I'm going for here, displaying uh, the iPad connected to external drive with the hard drives and all that stuff and really what the capabilities are for this moving forward. And if you guys have any other questions on this, definitely let me know. And make sure to follow me on Instagram. My personal one is at Roro Beckley and my professional one's at Rocky A Pro. My personal one, I'm a little bit more active, so definitely follow me on there where I kind of go into some other behind the scenes as far as all this stuff goes. So if you want to see some extra tidbits and things in my stories and posts, definitely check that out. And that's it. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Again, my name is Royce. And I will catch y'all later um, at some point because I'm just going to mess with this more and I don't, I'm done recording. So, bye. Perfect.